Most companies have an aggressive and effective safety program because employers care about everyone in the company. Every company's goal is employee safety. In this short training program, we're going to discuss only one part of a good safety program. It's called ergonomics. Ergonomics is nothing new, but there have been a number of improvements and advancements in the study of ergonomics recently. Let's take a look at this important topic because everyone needs to know the hazards associated with ergonomics. With this information, you'll be armed with the knowledge to prevent ergonomic related accidents and injuries. Ergonomics is a fancy word for the science of arranging and adjusting the work environment to fit the employee's body. It has been called human factors. But let's just stick with adjusting the work environment to fit the employee. Ergonomics has been around a very long time. It really started emerging during World War II when engineers began working with airplane pilots to see if the cockpits could be engineered better to make flying more comfortable, with easier to read instruments, and to improve the efficiency of the pilot and the airplane. These same principles are factored into almost everything we use today. Automobiles, kitchen appliances, tools, machinery, and of course, computers. Since accident statistics have been maintained, we've learned that most causes of poor productivity, poor quality, and accidents are due to human error. Equipment, objects, and environmental characteristics influence human behavior. Optimal performance is obtained when products, equipment, workstations, and work methods are designed while keeping human capabilities and limitations in consideration. This program emphasizes computer users, but the information applies to every job and every type of workstation. Ergonomics applies to workbenches positioned at appropriate working heights. It's using proper posture and ergonomics when using hand and power tools. Ergonomics is using lifting devices when you can, rather than straining your back and other parts of your body. Let's look at this demonstration of how the hand works. You can see this tunnel that is a sheath for the tendons. Every time a tendon moves in the finger, the tendon moves through this tunnel, back and forth, back and forth, all day long. Now, if the tendons are not positioned properly, there may be some scraping or irritation on the sides of the tunnel. This can occur when the hands and wrists are bent or crooked and not in the neutral position. Naturally, when something goes wrong in your body, there is some pain, sensation, or tingling to let you know there is a problem. This is the time to evaluate your posture and stop whatever is causing the irritation. These tendon inflammations usually occur before full-blown carpal tunnel syndrome sets in. Carpal tunnel syndrome is a specific, severe, and a debilitating form of RSI, which is described as a squeezing of the median nerve as it runs into the hand. The nerve is squeezed by swollen tendons surrounding it as they cross through a bony passage or carpal tunnel at the inside of the wrist. Symptoms include tingling of the hands and wrists, tightness, discomfort, stiffness, soreness or burning in the hands, wrists, fingers, forearms, or elbows. Some symptoms include a feeling of a need to massage your hands, wrists, and arms, or a pain that wakes you up at night. Clumsiness or loss of strength and coordination in the hands also can be symptoms. What should you do if you're experiencing symptoms as described above? Actually, the first thing to do is correct your typing technique, posture, and make sure your workstation is positioned properly. Good work habits should correct the majority of the problems. If the symptoms persist, report it to your employer. The longer you wait, the more severe the injury. There are many reasons for the recent increase in injuries due to computer use. One major reason is that computers are now allowing us to do more office tasks, which formerly allowed us to change activity or take breaks. As an example, a manual typewriter at one time required using a return carriage or a whiteout for mistakes, breaks for paper installation, and getting up from the desk to file papers. In other words, you were forced to do many things in addition to typing. What's a micro break, mini break, and quickie breaks? When we talk about short breaks, we're not necessarily talking about getting up and going to the break room for a cup of coffee. Quick, fast, short, micro breaks during your workday will save you from potential hazards associated with computers and workstations. The hazard is using computer word processing with relatively motion-free, long-duration, continuous, and precise muscular activity. 
The old typewriter offered users with an opportunity for micro breaks, even though this activity was not considered a break at all, but just work that had to be done. Now you know that micro, mini, or quickie breaks are a necessary part of RSI prevention techniques. When we talk about the computer workstation, many variables are introduced. The person, the lighting of the work area, furniture, computer, and other factors. Remember that the objective of ergonomics is to fit the work to the person. Let's take a look at a workstation and see what you can do to prevent potential hazards from becoming an injury. Proper lighting is designed to reduce glare and bright reflections from your screen, nearby glass, or shiny surfaces. This may require more than one adjustment, since light conditions change during the day. Keep your monitor screen clean. Many people make the mistake of putting the monitor, the keyboard, or both off to one side of the desk. If you perform more than a few minutes of keyboarding a day, the keyboard and monitor should be placed directly in front of your normal sitting position. The screen should be 18 to 30 inches from your eyes, or about an arm's length. The top of the monitor should be at eye level because the eyes are at their most comfortable position straight ahead, but slightly downward. When your head is in a neutral position, less force is used on the lever arm. If your head is higher than your monitor and you have to look down, you're using more muscular or lever arm force than you were in the neutral posture. The same applies for your arms and wrists. If they are in a neutral position, less force is used. The neutral position for your forearms is when they are parallel to the floor and the arms are not outstretched. Your back and hip should be at 90 degrees with each other and feet on the floor or some surface. The neutral position for the wrists is straight, but not twisted to the right or to the left. Wrists must be straight, never twisted. When your body changes to something other than a neutral position, you're exerting force in that area. The more force you use, the more likely you'll irritate tendons, muscles, ligaments, and other parts of your body. If you haven't had an eye exam lately, it's a good idea. Be sure and tell the optometrist how much computer monitor use you perform on a daily basis. To help protect your eyes, you should look away from the computer and focus on an object that is at least 20 feet away at least every 30 minutes. Keep in mind, you may be uncomfortable with these adjustments and changes initially, as old habits are hard to break. The goal is safety and injury prevention. These recommended adjustments will help accomplish this goal. Take a look at your mouse operations. At many workstations, it's common to see the keyboard in proper position just above the knees, but the mouse is on a higher and more forward counterpart. Mouse position should be on the same level as the keyboard so that mouse use does not create a twisted or reaching posture. It is suggested that the contrast and brightness levels on the monitor be adjusted to create the brightest screen without blurring. Black characters against a light gray background are often the easiest on the eyes for long periods. Frequently used items should be within arm's reach from your keyboarding position. A document holder should be at the same height and distance as the screen, so your eyes don't need to change focus so often. Frequent telephone use requires a headset to avoid bending the neck while keyboarding. Don't hold the phone squeezed between the neck and shoulder. Many RSIs begin with nerve damage or irritation in the neck and shoulders. The healthiest position for your wrist while typing is neutral. Neutral means the knuckles, wrist, and top of the forearm should form a straight line. The neutral position cannot be achieved while in contact with most commercial wrist pads. For this reason, keyboarding is best performed from a floating position. Frequent rest, micro breaks, and time away from the keyboard becomes necessary with floating wrists because it tends to emphasize shoulder muscle contraction. Don't forget to use the lightest possible finger pressure during keying. Banging on the keyboard is detrimental to your health. The elbows should form a 90 degree angle while hanging at your sides from the shoulders. If you use chairs with armrests, just be aware that rarely do chairs with armrests allow this position. It's very important that the shoulders remain relaxed in a lowered position during keyboarding. The seat height should allow the upper body postures as we've just been talking about. The upper body posture is most responsible for reducing the risk of injuries. Once this is accomplished, the feet should be flat on the floor. If the proper height of the seat does not allow for the feet on the floor, a footrest can be used. 
This allows the lower legs to be vertical and thighs horizontal. The chair backrest should have firm support for the inward curve of the lower spine and outward curve of the upper spine. Whether you need upper body support to help keep your torso and head vertical is a matter of your own preference. The seat of the chair should be large enough to accommodate frequent changes in position and firm enough to allow your weight to be supported through the buttocks, not the thighs. If others will use your chair, easy height adjustment is required. When you sit in one position for a long period of time, blood flow is restricted. Your body needs activity. You should change your sitting position at least every 15 minutes. Active breaks should be taken at least every 30 minutes, especially for those who perform more than two or three hours of keyboarding a day. Micro breaks should occur more often. An active break occurs when you stop keyboarding to do other things, such as take or make phone calls, file papers, or get up to get a drink of water. An active break should also include specific exercises. These exercises can be performed during keyboarding micro breaks, which occur while seated at your workstation. Let's take a look at some exercises you can easily perform to help reduce and prevent the effects of RSI. Raising your forearms and pointing your hands to the ceiling performs the shoulder blade squeeze. Push your arms back, squeezing your shoulder blades together. Hold for at least five seconds and repeat about three times. It may look funny, but it's effective. Next, the eye palming technique. Place your elbows on your desk, cup your hands and close your eyes. Place your eyelids gently down onto your palms. Hold this position for about one minute while breathing deeply and slowly. Then uncover your eyes slowly. The arm and shoulder shake is simply that. Drop your hands to your sides, then shake your relaxed hands, arms, and shoulders gently for at least five seconds, and then repeat three times. Spanning is placing your arms straight in front of you and spreading your fingers as far as possible for at least five seconds. Repeat this exercise five times. These are but a few key exercises, but there are many more. Try to find the best series that works for you. Remember that frequent breaks yield better long-term productivity and safety. Remember that the goal is to fit the workstation to the person, not the person to the workstation. The objective of the safety program is to make sure that all employees fully understand their job responsibilities in preventing accidents. This includes how to prevent RSI, CTD, and carpal tunnel syndrome from your use of computers. It includes all other forms of work, from forklift operations to maintenance and all other operations. If you're having problems, strains, sprains, or other forms of injuries, there is always a better way of doing things. Take a look at your work area and make suggestions on how to improve the ergonomics of performing your job. We want you to understand that ergonomics should be a part of your everyday life and living. How much time do you spend in your automobile? Is the steering wheel properly adjusted for your height? Think about safety at work, but also at home and during recreation. Safety is your responsibility. The company can provide the proper equipment, facilities, policies, and procedures, but when the race is finally finished, the ending is controlled only by you. You're the only person who has control of your safety behavior. We'd like to encourage you to participate in our safety program and be your own ergonomic engineer. If you need assistance with any part of the safety program or evaluation of your workstation, or just want more information about ergonomics, ask your supervisor. A team effort is required, and you're the most important part of the team. Thank you.